The views and opinions expressed in the following podcast do not necessarily reflect those of the producers, the affiliates, or digital platforms hosting this podcast. All content is for the purposes of education, conjecture, and at times entertainment. We promote inclusiveness and diversity. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Into the Deep with Jay Casta. Welcome to Into the Deep. I'm Jay Costa. I am ecstatic, excited, and all of the above for today's returning guest. One of my dear friends whom I love and adore. I just love his attitude and the energy he brings whenever we converse. Today's returning guest also happened to be our very first guest. And here we are in episode 54. Today's returning guest is Marcos Curiel. Marcos is the guitar player of P.O.D. and we talk about him becoming a DJ now. So we talk about P.O.D., we talk about new music, we talk about his DJ Marquitos, and we talk about cultivating empathy. So I just absolutely love and adore every time I talk with Marcos. So let's get right to it. Join me as we seek light and journey into the deep with Marcos Curiel. Enjoy. I wore my pink gloves just for this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start an Instagram page just for the pink gloves. Bam, bam. <laughs> New York City. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Ah, oh, man, I've missed you. <laughs> what have you been yeah. up to? Well, I mean, first and foremost, being a dad and then uh, POD stuff. So just finished the new record. Um, it should be out early. I mean, uh, it should be out later this year or early next year. It's all about the, you know, the politics with the label and, and getting all the marketing and everything set up. They want to make sure it's gets all that attention before we, cause if I were up to me, I just like put it out today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. But, um, it's done. We, uh, we worked with the producers, uh, the duo, they're called the heavy. And then Josh Wilbur uh, mixed it and Howie Weinberg mastered it. Wow. That's yeah. a team. <laughs> yeah. It sounds killer. We're, we're extremely proud of it. We can't wait for everyone to hear it and do a whole nother cycle of touring on it. So we're ready, man. That's awesome. Well, I know I'm ready. I can't wait to hear it. I, like I said, love the last record. I've loved the last several records. Who am I kidding? But, you Thank know. you, man. Yes. We, uh, We've been working hard on it. It took a couple years to make just because of the pandemic and everything that we've been going through as a band internally growing, maturing, uh, you know, we've been a band for a long time. So it's like, it's not as easy as getting in a garage like when we were younger kids now, cause we all have our own families and our own stuff going on. So it's like, all right, we doing this or what? <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah, man, all is good. And then I, I've actually, during the pandemic, I started DJing. Um, I saw that. I've, al <laughs> I, I've always had a passion, you know, for electronic music. Um, and if a lot of people know the history of POD, I was one of the big advocates to get a remix by Crystal Method for Boom. Paul Oakenfold did a remix for us and a bunch of various other artists. But I never really pondered the thought of getting into it more other than just listening and being a fan and uh during the pandemic i was like why not so then i started messing with it. i started going live on instagram and people would actually listen to my set <laughs> and be like dude when are you gonna go out and start doing this live and it was just like i don't know so i just said well i'm either gonna just learn as i go and suck <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of grow and dude i just picked picked it up and i had a couple friends give me some pointers and i've been it's just it's a whole nother art it's a whole nother craft dude um you know it gets a lot of flack from traditional musicians like oh well you know and i'm like actually dude you'd be surprised i treat that controller like a pedal board for a guitar player with effects 
and you get to mash up and you get to it's all about timing and all of that stuff hold on a second here no send a voicemail yeah so anyway sorry about that no no worries come on Um, (laughs) but yeah I've, i've really been passionate about that i'm working on some personal stuff with regards to releasing electronic music that i'm writing right now heck yeah so you know i've been actually doing a lot of after pod after parties and people have been showing up and you know it, it, I'm not doing top 40. I'm not doing what a lot of people are doing. I'm, I'm doing a, a lot of the electro EDM deep house trance, you know, with some eighties throwbacks and just kind of just having fun with that, man. Oh. My DJ name is Marquitos. Marquitos is actually, uh, it's a term. If you have a name like my Marcos, and the Latino world or the Hispanic world, or the Chicano world, whatever you want to call it, it means little Marcos. So it's like Marquitos, come here. And, you know, Marquitos. And so I was like, you know, how could I get creative with that and spell it differently? So I spell it M-A-R-K-3-Y-T-0-5. So Marquitos. <laughs> I love it. I know I saw that when I saw Marquitos. I was like, whoa, yeah. all right. I like hey, this. Dude, you roll your R's. Are you Latino? Uh, well, I mean, uh, Azorian Portuguese. So I've, I can, oh, that's I can Latin. roll. Yeah. I can roll with the best of them. I mean, but there's always conflict. Some people don't consider some Portuguese speaking nations, Latina or Latino. Um, they, some of them just, uh, I, it's weird. I do because they're right next to each other. Portugal, right? Spain, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So whatever. That's yeah. cool, man. I had no idea. That's pretty cool. And dude, thanks for having me again, man. Cause, uh, I remember, I, I want to say I was your first podcast ever, right? You were 100% first episode, man. That's what I was going to bring up. I'm so glad you remember. <laughs> well, dude, what number am I now? What number is this? Number two. Uh, this is, well, gosh, if this is our second conversation, this is going to be 54, <laughs> 53. Wow. Yeah. That's cool, man. I'm so, I'm, dude, I'm happy for you too. Like we just kind of take on new ende- you know, endeavors and just kind of just grow with it, man. Yeah. That's what the beauty of like, you know, being creative is. And like, that's, you know, even to your point earlier, you know, you treating, you know, that fader and treating everything that you're doing in the DJ world, you're treating it like a pedal board. You're, you know, you're being creative with it and you're expressing yourself in a way that no one else can. Yeah. And just having fun because you're actually putting songs out there that a lot of people have never heard. And that's the thing. That's why I'm not the guy that's going to do your wedding or go out and play top 40 because it's not like it's not that for me for me it's for fun and being able to play tunes that have inspired me or that i like and mixing them into a set and where people are like dude who is this who is that and i'm like well there you go i did my job <laughs> <laughs> right that's awesome i know i can picture it now like sneaking in some cure putting in some yeah <laughs> yeah man and that's what's really cool is because you can actually get it's all about tempo and timing you can actually get a beat that's like, let's say, disintegration from or fast off of disintegration, fascination street, the baseline, and have that going, and then put a, a different beat underneath that's in the same time map, and you kind of mesh mash them together, and then you an acapella from something that's just in the same time grid, but it's not even part of the you know, like Eminem, and you can mix it all in, and it's like, what is this? It's like, it's just a big old mashup, dude. Right. All Pretty from cool. your mind. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And that's what makes it fun for me. You oh. know, cause you get into the looping, you get into the delays and all that stuff. dude. Oh, that's awesome. And who knows? You, you may do a wedding or two. Who knows? You never know. <laughs> I'm not against it. I'm not against it. It's just, I, you know, I'm not that kind of DJ that's going to be out there trying to, you know, just do it because I'm trying to just, grind i i, I want to do it for an art you know for the art you know nothing against the grinders that's just not where i'm at you know no 100 percent. i could totally we all have a grinder another dude whether it's being in a band being a session guitarist or whatever we all have our grind man yeah so. that's so true and it was so cool when I, I started seeing you post more about your djing i was like all right okay here we go whole whole new avenue <laughs> funny, like dude, I, I get a lot of flack for it because you know there's a lot of people that have this tunnel vision mm-hmm. surprising i think it was a little bit more in the past like that it was a little more tunnel vision style but i still run into those people 
But for the most part, I think nowadays, a lot of people are a little more open. They're like, dude, I love going to, you know, electro EDM stuff and I'm going to go into a deathcore show or something. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's so funny to think about like the dichotomy sometimes uh, that people carry with them. If they associate you with like, you know, a hardcore a metal or punk band, and then you have like this something seemingly in the other opposite in the spectrum and they, they have a hard time wrapping their minds around it. <laughs> yeah. That's just, they, they just gotta be open to growing, man. Cause it, music is music, regardless of style, you either feel it or you don't. And that's why it's subjective. And you know what? Not everybody has to like, the same style of music that's her, that's why there's so many different styles but i even if i don't really care for something i never shun it and be like Ugh, i just you know what? it's not for me but i get it i know i can see why people dig on it you know so it's pretty cool yeah yeah i feel the same way when i hear something that might not necessarily you know tickle my fancy per se uh i'll you know eventually i can find something in it that i can understand why maybe some other like maybe a younger generation or maybe somebody can lash onto and and, and feel it and groove out to it and say all right cool not everyone understood the music i got into so it all it's all relative yeah. you know yeah man and you know what dude it's all it's always just an evolving door bro a revolving door and evolving you know what i mean hundred percent. Yeah. I know <laughs> what's old becomes new again and vice versa. It's, it's well, cyclical. even the styles, man. Like I see all these jingle pants coming back around jingle pants <laughs> yes. and I'm like, what the heck's going on over here? <laughs> I remember that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's wild, you know, cause it's nostalgic for, for us to see it come back. But for, for a whole new generation, this is brand new. It's just like, it's retro, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and for us, we're like, eh, been there, done that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's yeah. awesome. So, uh, gosh, I mean, I know we had talked about it and listened to the um, the remix and remaster uh, of, you know, When Angels and Serpents Dance. I love mm -hmm. that album. I, I remember telling you that before, but I loved <laughs> the the remix and the remaster. It came out fantastic. Thanks, man. We had Jay Baumgartner, who actually produced it. Uh, he actually mixed the original version. He was like, dude, give me a second shot at remixing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can do a better job at it. And we were like, sure. <laughs> so Howie actually mastered that one too. Howie Weinberg, who actually did a lot of the Cure records, Nirvana, Chili Peppers uh, on the mastering tip. And so he's actually the one who did the new record also. Uh, we're actually working during, during the pandemic. We did three sets at Peco Park, which is our our local um, baseball stadium for the Padres. They were kind enough to loan us Gallagher Park Square. There was nobody allowed to be there because of the pandemic, but we had full-on production and we did three live sets for our fan base worldwide, a stream, and we did satellite from beginning to end. We did fundamental elements of Southtown from beginning to end. And then we did a third set of just like, songs that we never really played before or rare rarities and stuff like that. So we did three sets. We have those recorded. We have the video obviously for, but we have those recorded um, for audio that we're going to get. I think Jay's going to be mixing those and we're going to be dropping those three sets of us playing live. And I technically call them the pandemic sessions. So, <laughs> you know, we play some songs off of that record that we've never actually done live before. So on the rarity set. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. You know, I, it's so interesting, you know, being, being in a band and, you know, you kind of build out your set lists and, you know, based on, you know, what singles actually hit, you know, okay, these are the single, these are the singles that are going in rotation. Okay. Obviously you put those in the set, but then there's always those songs that like, I don't know. I don't know if it's the same for you with your bandmates, but like for me and my guys, it's always a, uh, one person likes this song and three are kind of like on the fence about it. And it's like, you're trying to figure out how do we fill this in must be a little different when you have such a catalog like you guys have. Uh, I mean, we, we kind of want to always be on the same page. It's kind of like everyone's in or not, but sometimes we just got to be a little more open-minded. Like when I rejoined the band I was, uh, in 2007, I wasn't there for about four years. Uh, I wasn't with the guys. The, I was uh, I was pulling that whole Sammy Hagar or the whole uh, Freshante 
if I didn't record it and I didn't, you know, do wasn't a part of it, I'm not playing it live. And then I started to realize like, well, dude, I'm a musician. There's a fan base here. They actually kept the, the brand and the band afloat while I wasn't around. I should give it a shot. So I had learned a couple songs that they wanted to play that I wasn't really too familiar with, or maybe they weren't my favorite, but it was fun to see the reaction of the crowds that were like, dude, I can't believe Marcos is actually playing that song. Um, and, you know, I gave it my best shot interpretation wise with my style. And it's always something like that when it comes to playing other people's stuff, you're like, okay, well, I want to do it justice. And hopefully I, I do. And, uh, you, you want to give your listener a lot of times what they want, what they want to hear. And I mean, we're still, as musicians, we're very self-indulgent, <laughs> like, we write for ourselves. We write what we like. We're being creative because that's what's inside of us. But you got to remember the listener who admires and listens to your music also wants you to play certain things. So just try to keep that in mind. I mean, there's some times when you get stubborn and go, eh, no, never playing that song. <laughs> <laughs> um, but dude, yeah, it, it can get, it can get a little difficult at times when one member doesn't want to perform a certain song or play it. It's not their favorite. And then the other three are, or the band is split half and half. <laughs> we kind of get to a place where it's like, well, let's just give it a shot. And then we, we jam it live and that wasn't too bad. Or, you know what? We just got a bunch of deer in headlights. People looking at us like, what are you guys doing? And it's so funny when you play these deep cuts so that you, that you want to play or that two fans out of the whole packed out want to hear and then the rest of them are like is that a new song and you're like no that's on our that's on our one record you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. pretty funny <laughs> that's awesome yeah i can i can align like at the at the height of our like regular touring cycle you know we would try and sneak in songs that we hadn't ever played before you know and sometimes it's a train wreck emotionally you know you're like oh yeah. man i don't think that sounds great <laughs> we haven't yeah. played that before I know, man. But you know what? That's the whole thing about being an artist, man. A lot of it is just feel feeling. It, it, all, all of it is pretty much feel, but it's trial and error. You know, it's like, oh, let's try. Oh, that didn't work out so well. You know, and and I've always been a fan of the saying, if it's perfect, then it's not rock and roll, dude. You know, you got to have some of that. And then you even go deeper in that. With, with the, if it's punk rock or hardcore, you got it's got to be dirty and gritty, man. Like, hey, things aren't going to be perfect, man. So you got to always keep that in mind, you know? Yeah. It's the same with DJing, dude. Oh, no, that, that, didn't, that didn't blend right. I got to wheel it back up to the one. Oh, dang it. I hope nobody saw that. You, but most of the time people are dancing. They're just partying and think that's what you meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Until it's like, eh. <laughs> Right. When what it's happened? really noticeable. Yeah. You're like, dang it. <laughs> but that's but like you said that, you know, that's that's part of the uh, part of the beauty of it, you know, is like the, it becomes its own entity. And that happy little accident is like, I, you know, Bob Ross used to call it, you know, like I think that's the beauty of it, because if someone's there witnessing it, then it's a special moment in time. Captured, yeah. You know, just means that you're alive in the moment good or bad you're feeling you're having those feelings like okay i'm i'm here you know and uh sometimes a lot of times things don't go as planned there's that saying dude hey everything you plan for right you're planning for life it's all the things that you didn't plan for that's life <laughs> so accurate yeah so right life happening for us you know well to teach us a lesson or you know you know learn learn something knew about ourselves and stuff like that yeah i agree i know I and sometimes it hurts <sighs> and you're like oh growing pains but then you're like man i'm kind of glad i went through that because i would have never even pondered you know being where i'm at today that's where the character was built from you know what i mean 100 percent. yeah and i think we can all you know as we get older you know it seems like we have those moments that we can point back to that we can remember yeah. were those pivotal moments in time. Heck yeah, man. Cause, uh, still learning every day, man, every day, like, you know, mistakes and just things that are like, 
wow, I didn't think that affected this person that way or was going to affect, that wasn't my intention. But I could see how they could have taken that wrong. You know what I mean? And you learn from it. So just to be a little more conscious about certain things. Because, you know, as you grow up, you you, you could give two shits. You're like, screw it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it's just learning to be a little more empathetic to your surroundings and the people around you. I, I, I'm a big believer in, in a lot of the Eastern philosophy, yin and yang balance, man. A little too much of anything good is too much and it's not good for you. Anything too much bad, it's too much. You got to find that even keel, man, that even balance. So. Yeah, I, I align with that as well. It's, uh, you know, trying to find that perfect dance, you know, of, mm -hmm. you know, that balance in life, you know, and, and for ourselves, you know, and I think getting older, holding ourselves more accountable than we did when we were growing up. Yeah. Well, dude, it's crazy. Cause I just, you know, I don't like to get too much on politics cause it, it really drains me. But when you overall look at the way our country reacts to certain things, it's very unbalanced. And I've been trying to explain that to people. I said, look, man, there's that, there's that middle zone. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to be right. We actually have a song on our new record called Dead Right. And being dead right, even when you're wrong, it's like there's so many people like that nowadays. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, we're trying to do the best. It's like nobody wants to give an inch because they fear, they fear that they're going to give a mile. It's like... It's just, it's just really frustrating because there's no balance. It's just like right, left, black, white. There's, it's just like, where's the, where's the middle zone? Let's work together and, and let's do a middle zone kind of a thing. That's kind of lost. And <clears throat> I joke around and say, man, I've been saying this quite often. It's like, you know what, man? We kind of get, we kind of got to go to the, the old school rules of the bar. No, nope, no religion and no politics. And let's have a good time. <laughs> I think like, that needs to be written into the con into the constitution. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. You're at a bar, you're at a lodge. It's, it's no yeah. politics, no religion. You're just, you know, positive you're vibrations, man. Let's freaking, let's get along, dude. That's it. You know, cause everybody's on the level. Everybody's just, we're all trying to fight the good fight. We're all trying to figure things out and life's hard yeah. enough. Yep. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just sad, man, but hopefully we can find, and hopefully our children or our children's children can find that balance from our mistakes. Hmm. So I love that. And that's, I think that's the piece there too, is thinking about the future generations, right? I think mm -hmm. sometimes when it comes the to youth, the youth of the nation, Yes. <laughs> All comes back. <laughs> yeah. That's the key, man. It it really is. It's it's leaving the uh leaving the earth better than we found it. Yeah, man. And even our relationships Amen. with our friends, with our family. You know, we all can't see eye to eye, but you know what, dude? If we can grow from each other and learn from each other, I think that's half the battle, dude. Absolutely. And yeah. and I'll tell you, man, being in a band is no different. That's like friends and family, right? They're all in one. And, Correct. Uh, yep. Everybody's got different personalities. Everyone has opinions. And it's just like, dude, okay. <laughs> Don't necessarily agree, but okay. I love you and I'm going to listen to you. And but just give me a fair shot and listen to me too. So that, that's all. That's where that balance comes in. Yeah. That's such a good call. I mean, I feel like too, when people are, you know, have been in bands, like especially like touring bands and been doing this for a while, like you, you learn relationships, you learn how to work together over time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that's the goal anyway, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, it's just a lot. We, it's impossible for everybody to know every single person on that personal level to understand where they're truly coming from. And I think that that comes into play with a lot of things with, with regards to thinking that, you know, somebody or you don't like, and that, I think a lot of people pass judgment. I have learned because it's been, it's happened to me before. And I try to not, 
ever be too judgmental, but just kind of listen to somebody and see what their intentions are and, and, and kind of go, okay. And, and you just kind of, not just necessarily their words, but their actions and kind of say, okay, I kind of understand where this person's coming from. Now, do I agree? I don't, but I understand like, especially when you get into politics here in the States, it's like, that's the beautiful thing about the so-called American dream. You're allowed to say whatever the hell you want just as much as I am, but you're not supposed to be hurting anybody. And a lot of that is, I think, uh, we we got taught that and if you had good upbringing if you ain't got nothing nice to say then don't say it so it's like right now everyone's got loose lips man and i'm like you're sinking everybody's own ships and we're all on the same team because if anything were to go down we're all americans dude so i'm like come on what are you tripping on you know what i mean? <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's hard when, you know, things are so polarizing and it can feel like we're just being bombarded with things that try to separate us constantly, these categories and, you know, just having to label things, you know, rather than us focusing on the commonalities, it feels like exterior forces constantly are trying to pick out all the differences. Mm-hmm. And dude, it's okay. And, and, and that's the problem. Fear is the unknown for a lot of people. So if they don't know, they automatically are like, that's bad or that they're not good. I'm like, wait a minute. It's not, that's not necessarily true, you know? And there's a lot of jump in the gun. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but all I can do, man, all we can do with our music and with your show and, and just being artists in general, like is just, just try to spread hope, love and, and try to like, you know, encourage people and inspire people to be better you know and and that that's the only thing i can do man i mean i mean i'm just one man but dude if you can inspire one other person they can inspire another 10 it's just kind of like that trickle down effect and i'm a true believer in that dude so amen me too pay it forward man pay it forward always pay it forward you have to i mean gosh that's it you know when we we look at others you know and we you know, we can see a little bit of ourselves in each person and vice versa, you know, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's challenging for people to, to accept any kind of feedback, you know, when they've been out of line or done something wrong, but sometimes we're conditioned until we, you know, when you know better, do better. Right. Yeah. And you got to remember, I, I don't remember where where I saw or heard this quote, but it's not about perfection, man. It's about progress. And that's like so true to me, dude. Like everyone is like striving to be perfect. And it's like, dude, that's not, that's not what makes you special, man. It's all the, like when you're in the recording studio, that little mess up, perfect example on uh, Radiohead's Creep. From what I heard, that little chucka, chucka, that everyone tries to get in the studio, chucka, chucka. Um, it's like, that was a, that was an error. So if you think about it, they kept an air and it was a beautiful moment, dude. So it's okay. Right. Oh, love that example, which it's such an iconic point <laughs> in the song too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Every I time mean, you hear I, it. I wasn't there. So don't quote me. I'm not sure. I just read that that was the deal. And, and if that's true, that's amazing. Right on. Yeah. I don't know. We don't, we don't need this on AP and everyone's going to be like, Marco said, <laughs> No, no, no. right no but still though like that i love that and i i hope that that's what happened because it's just the coolest thing because happy accidents bob like, ross yeah that, that dude, that's a song yeah happy right? accident happy accidents <laughs> happy accident happy accident experiment you know <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> heck yeah i was listening to that probably about two three weeks ago maybe and i was like oh my gosh it's probably right around oh, before I hit you up, man. Oh, nice, dude. That's dope. Yeah, I'm still. I still need to get that that United We Fear up on uh on Spotify and all the streaming sites. It's not up. We only have a uh, our EP up. Arena. That's, I I noticed that. Yeah. 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 Well, I still have a hard copy, so I uh, I still yeah, me have. Me too. CDs. I have to figure it out. I'm gonna have to use the hard copy master just to get it out there, all punk rock style. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. The yeah. DIY baby. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. It's 
awesome. So tell me a little bit more. So um, what's going on with, um, you know, you said possibly later this year, early next year for the new POD. Um, any any touring plans? I see some festival dates popping up for the summer. We do have some festival dates coming up. Uh, we're kind of just um, being super selective on the stuff that we're doing at this stage in our career. We're not in any hurry and we have nothing to prove. Like people either love us or don't really care for us. Like at least you know who the band is. That's not the issue. It's just trying to get, you know, not wait. Time is precious, man. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do touring that actually for all of us makes the most sense is what we're, where we're at in our career and putting out records. And, you know, we're definitely going to be touring on this new record. It's just, you know, we've been getting offers for certain tours that are actually out and we, we you know, we had to pass on them, not because we're being snobby, because we want to make sure it's the right tour for us. And we don't want to overplay and kind of just put ourselves out there just to put ourselves out there, you know, and there, you know, there's a lot to be said there with, with, with regards to demand. So we want to do, we want to make sure we're selective absolutely smart you know you have to especially you know it's you know even just from my perspective and the optics that you know we had as you know as a band you know as an independent band for so long it, it's just it was for us getting more and more challenging just to keep people's interest to want to come to a live show um and then with you know music streaming you know it was like you know we don't have everything up i only have a couple songs up there and it's like no no come to a show you know, we're going to have the physical medium if you want it, because it's just, you know, this is what we're doing, you know, come on out, support it. So it's smart to just, Hey, look, you know, make it count. Like we're going to be out there. People are going to want to come see you, you know? Yeah. I mean, and then when you have new music out, you know, it's one of those things where you just say, Hey man, I haven't seen POD in a while. Well, this is your opportunity, buddy. Absolutely. And you know, as, as, as we have actually gotten older and we're blessed to still be here, playing our music we've seen the cycle man we see guys that grew up with us now they're bringing their kids hmm. and then the next you know a couple of years later their kids are bringing their friends to the shows and it's just like wow that's a trip <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we we've been around long enough now to see the generations man like a couple of different decades and like dang not many bands are, are able to say that and we're definitely blessed and we acknowledge that man that's awesome i know when i think about like guys have been doing this for over a quarter of a century <laughs> yeah and we're still getting up there doing our darndest to freaking rock oh my back <laughs> no you guys are killing it still and that's that's sincerity right there like you you know and you can tell i think because it's i i know it's because it's coming from the right place it's coming from that the place of passion and doing it because you love it. And it's evident, you know, and something to be said about that. It keeps us mentally, spiritually, and physically young, I think. <laughs> well, I think the arts kind of keeps us all young, man. Like mm -hmm. it's weird. Like you just, all my friends that are in the arts or in the music biz, unless, you know, they got strung out or something, they look, they don't look their age. <laughs> Most of them don't. And it's because they're happy doing what they love, man. And, you know, you don't have to go out and, you know, and it's not about the money and all that. You're just happy. Success ha isn't all about money. Success is about being able to do what you love personally for me and be happy and actually sustain a living. That's success to me, dude. You know, because money's like water, dude. It comes and goes. Sometimes it's flowing, sometimes it's dry. <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, okay. But I love what I do. <laughs> Amen. Right. Because we're technically in the service industry, bro. I mean, there's some residual income, but you got to play a show to get paid, you know? Right. So that's the way it goes, man. Absolutely. You uh, you have any plans for any, any books? You're going to be writing a book or any novels anytime soon? <laughs> Maybe one day. It's not really on my uh, my future agenda at the moment. Um, my main thing is just trying to be creative mm. 
And uh, whether it's electronic music or a POD or any other project that I'm involved with, it's just, that's my happy place. Mm-hmm. And that's just, when I tell people, I go, well, you know, I know if there's one thing I know for sure, uh, I was put on this big rock to be creative. And whether you like it or not, I'm going to still create. And, you know, thank to the most high, I'm able to still do it. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's a blessing, bro. It really is. And it's uh, it's astounding when we think about life around us and all the, I don't know, just the, I don't know, the way I see it anyway. Um, not to sound like a hippie, but like just the, the beauty of the natural world and just the, everything around me and just being so grateful for it. And it's, it's like taking that and wanting to create as well. You know, mm-hmm. well, dude, if you think about it, just as human nature, being able to build a home or create an aircraft or create a, a car, I mean, art, that's just one side of it, dude. We're, we're constantly creating a, a woman, her womb. It grows, man. Like it creates another living being. Like, so I think we're all creative. We just have to tap in on what that is for us. You know, um, we all, we all have to serve a purpose and a lot of it is creating, whether you're creating something that's making a huge difference or if you're just creating something to make somebody else a lot of money, you're still doing it. <laughs> you're still being creative, you know? So I'm a big advocate for, you know, trying to help younger generation tap into that and say, look, we all can create something, you know? regardless of what that is for you you have to figure that out and find the passion so it's a big deal man i think a lot of people go through life not under not even tapping in and understanding what that is you're right it's you know i have a few people in my life that weren't i guess not given the opportunity or maybe didn't have the opportunity or didn't have individuals in their life really fanning that flame of creativity or, or showing them so there's a little bit of a disconnect but yet when they tell me they're not creative i see creative things that they do so it's interesting but then there's people like ourselves they kind of have to show them that Mm -hmm. and you know whether they're receptive or not it's up to them dude i i just want to try to inspire and, and you know encourage my my fellow man as much as i can dude and it's not always easy because a lot of people aren't receptive. A lot of people are, oh, man, you're on that hippie shit, bro. And I'm like, you know, you know what? I'll take it. If that's what it seems like to you, but it's exactly what it is for me. You know, it's a positive thing. It's definitely not a negative thing. I'm just trying to encourage you, man. That's all. Yeah. I mean, that's I was saying earlier, right, right before we hopped on, it was just like, you know, meeting you, you know, way back. And we just had this like instant connection was just that vibe. It was this thing where it was just like, I instantly was like, yes, I get this person, yeah. this, you know? Yeah, man. And you, you know what, dude, you just always resonated joy. And even if I didn't know you personally, um, or know what you were personally going through, like you always project a positive energy and, that's what I try to tell people. I go, dude, just because you're you're trying to be a positive person doesn't mean that you're not going through any shit. You just, you know, I you can go to the gym. I, I get in the gym as much as I can, but you you got to do the same thing with your mind. Mm. You do. Like you got to train your mind to be like, okay, I see what's going on here. I can either be predictable and go this certain way, or I can choose to make a different choice and go a a whole different way about this whole situation and stay positive. That's a choice. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that because it's something that you have to learn and you have to practice. So. So glad you said that practice. It really Mm -hmm. is. Yeah. It is practice, man you know, it's, it's not just like someone wakes up and I think sometimes I think people see 
things on social media, people are posting all the great stuff and people try to compare themselves to this other person's life, that this person's always happy and they're always successful. And, you know, we don't see all the other things and we definitely don't see the inner dialogue that's happening. <clears throat> well, think about it like this. Social media is kind of like a stage. When an artist gets on stage, they're playing your favorite song and they're up there rocking out. But little did you know that they were dealing 10 minutes before they jumped on stage with a spouse or a, you know, a child, like a, a daughter or a son's going through something or uh, a parent. And then you're like, man, you're still human. You're still dealing with it. But then you get on stage. Okay, I got to do what I love to do. But people, Whoa! they don't have a clue, man. Social media is the same way. It's like you're putting your best foot forward and showing the highlights. You're not showing the. I mean, there are some people that I've seen. <laughs> they put a lot of bummer shit on. on it. So sure. Like, yeah. Are you all right, dude? <laughs> right. Like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But, but for the most part, I, I believe it's everyone trying to, you know, it, it, the problem is, is people take it in as like a competition and it's yeah. not. Right. That's the problem. It's not a competition. Live your own life. Post what you want to post. And you're going to get judged. You're going to get ridiculed no matter who you are. It, just do you, man. That's it. As long as you're not hurting anybody and you're staying positive, not spreading negative poison, then by all means, have at it, dude. Absolutely. I couldn't say it any better myself, man. You, uh, you've you always had that. uh about you just always maintaining that positive mindset and i appreciate it uh i appreciate you and you know i wasn't born this way man no i i had to go through a lot man just to get to this place and you know open my mind to read open my mind to listen and to try certain things you know mentally and spiritually and emotionally uh and you know, a lot of that just, you know, from as simple as you, it may sound, but dude, empathy, a lot of people don't have it. So, you know, um, yeah, dude, it's, it, it's something like, like that, even as, as simple as that, like that for me personally, like I used to not be empathetic towards certain things. And then I started to be like, why am I like that? And I started to do, uh, you know, a lot of self reevaluation and it takes a lot of maturity to be able to even tap into something like that. Doesn't mean I'm better than anybody. It doesn't mean that I'm right. It just means like you have to humble yourself personally in here and in here to be like, okay, how do I make myself better? And that's why I like to compare the physical side and then the mental side. And then the emotional side, because there's a lot of people that aren't emotionally mature, man. And it's not that I'm judging them. It's just like, whoa, like you got to learn how to deal with certain things and cope. And that's part of growing. And, uh, you know, it's hard. It's not easy. But it's just like any other thing. If you keep jogging, I started, I did a half a mile. You keep doing a half a mile next thing you know, or you're up to a mile. Before you know, you're doing two. And then, you know, so on. Before you're dude, I'm doing a marathon. I just did 10 miles. Well, yeah, you worked up to it. You didn't just wake up one day and go, bam, dude, I'm, yeah, I'm going for it. You know, so I always joke around when people get a little too ahead of themselves. I'm like, look, dude, you got to learn to crawl. I say this to my boys all the time, my kids. I go, you can't just expect to be flying, dude. You got to learn to, you know, crawl, walk, run, jump. And then glide. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it, it, it's it's interesting, man, because I don't have it all figured out. And I get a little vulgar sometimes. I'm like, dude, I ain't your fucking guru. I don't know what I'm talking about sometimes. I I do, but I don't I don't I don't have it all figured out. I'm not the one to be like, yo, I know what you know. No. I'm a work in progress, just like everybody else. Now, if I can help you out with what I know, kind of, and it inspires you. And, you know, it's funny because I'll post these quotes. It's a big deal to me on my Instagram. It's not because of ego or I, I need to do this. It, it's because it's something that I read that inspired me 
or it encouraged me. Um, and uh, sorry, man. And it basically was something I was like, you know what? Maybe someone else can get something from this. And it's funny because those posts are usually the less, the, the least, they get the least amount of likes. But then when I don't post that stuff, it's certain people like, dude, I miss your posts. And I'm like, well, and then I go, well, dude, I haven't really, I don't post something just to post it. I have to see something or read something that I feel strongly about enough to do that repost. So once again, I kept, during this whole, this whole uh, episode here, it's like, all I've been talking about is like encouraging and inspiring. If that's what we can do as humans on this rock, then I think that's, that's all you really need to do, man. Because if you inspire and you encourage, I think it comes back to you like that too. The universe is listening and goes, here you go, son. I got you. <laughs> right. That's some, that's some hippie shit for you though. Yeah. Right, <laughs> you know, I love that. <laughs> I do. It's, but it's so true. And it's, it's wild when we, we, you know, have those moments where we're maybe, you know, reflective and we think about like, oh gosh, you know, maybe I haven't been in the right headspace and then we got to get back on the horse, you know, proverbially, you know, it's, it's like that thing that I had to work on was that internal dialogue. And I went through a period of time where it was like, you know, just, you know, beat myself up mentally, you know, and that's not good, you know? So I find that when I'm trying to encourage other people, it's like, I'm, I'm also helping myself at the same time, you know? And Yet I'm thinking about them, but at the same time, it's, it's helping me. Well, a lot of times it, it bounces right back. You're encouraging mm. somebody and then they say something, you're like, oh, well, okay. Damn. I didn't see it like that. Okay. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So it's all part of the process, man. Um, and dude, like I, I, you know, I've, I've listened to a few of your podcasts. I love what you're doing. Oh. Um, I think, um, the topics are really awesome and you know i'm I'm so happy that you even wanted me to ha have me back so soon you know 50, oh. 50 episodes later so Absolutely. i'm grateful to be here brother ah oh, i'm grateful to have you man i'd do this anytime you want to be on i'll have you on you kidding me guest number that. one what's that well, i need to get sunny on here yeah let's do it let's make it happen yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a good I time happen, dude. yeah yeah man It'd be a lot of fun. Well, I don't want to hold you up. I know you got a busy day ahead of you. I just appreciate you taking some time. Um, and just, you know, I love you so much and uh, I appreciate it's, you so much. It's mutual, my brother. I love you too, man. And uh, I can't wait to uh, to link up, have a cup of coffee or have some breakfast or something, you know? Heck yeah. I know. We're going to make that happen. So uh, Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, brother. So where can folks find you on Instagram? Uh, I have my official page, uh, official Marcos Curiel, and then my DJ page is Marquitos, M-A-R-K-3-Y-T-0-5, but I have a link on my uh, official Marcos Curiel page for all my projects up top there. Um, so um, yeah, come support, and uh, I'd love to uh, say hi to you in person if you're following me and you like what I do. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Awesome. And I'll be sure we always, we'll put the links in the descriptions below so people can find it and uh, definitely awesome. follow along. Well, I, I mainly do Instagram. And then from there, it goes out to Facebook and Twitter. It's the same post. I don't have time to keep doing different posts for all different formats. So I have them linked. I send one out, it goes to all of them. That's yeah, that's smart. Good use yeah. of your time too. It's just one post. And yeah, pretty much. And watch it and watch it go. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Jay, thank you once again, brother. And, uh, Let's do this again soon, bro. And there you have it. Ah, Marcos, thank you so much, brother. I cannot thank you enough for your time and the energy you put out into this world through your music, through your words. And I just, I love conversing with you. So thanks for being back on the show. You can find Marcos on Instagram at official Marcos Curiel, as well as his DJ handle, which is DJ Marquitos. And all the links are in the description below. If you're watching this video, we sure hope you can take a moment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and hit that notification bell so you can find out about the new bi-weekly episodes that come out. Also, leave a comment below. 
Let us know if you've got a favorite POD song. Let us know if anything in this conversation resonated with you. This is a community and we want everybody's voice to be heard. Until next time, please take care of one another and keep thinking for yourself.